Hello, I'm Eddie from Kepo Models and today uh, in part two we're going to have a look at how to prepare your building for painting uh, and painting. So now that the filler is dried and the glue is all fully dried you can see that the uh, joints are nice and hard. Now there's a small amount that I just need to sand off quickly before we paint it just along there, just to remove any small little bits that I've got stuck on, like this little bit here and here. And once we've done that, the next thing you need to do is wash all of the pieces. This this is to remove any small filings from the uh, file or from sanding, and also to remove uh, the mold release spray, uh, which we use on the molds. This is like a waxy substance and um, it means that we can reuse the moulds um, several times before they get ruined. Um, so you can use sort of warm soapy water to give the building and all of the parts a wash beforehand. We are now ready to paint the building. We have all the pieces cleaned up and they've all been washed. I'm just using a bin bag here. Um, to stop the spray paint and going on the workbench. Now what I normally use is I normally use this Halfords White Primer. Um, this is quite good um, and it provides a nice strong base. Uh, what I do find is if you don't use a primer uh, what can happen is um, sort of if you use humble paints or acrylic paints uh, on the roof, if you've got heavy rain battering down on the roof, um, it can dislodge small pieces of paint over time and you can end up with a speckled look. Um, so if you use a decent primer in the first place, this really helps stop that from happening. Um, so I've actually run out of this white primer, so today I'm going to use this other Halfords primer, this filler primer. This is also quite good. Uh, I found that the best primer is Halfords um, acid etch primer which is grey uh, um, that's really good um, for the roof you can just spray the whole roof with that and leave it that colour and maybe add some uh, black on afterwards washed over to make it look a bit dirty um, so I'm just going to show you the station building which I'm working on just now so this has been done with the white primer this is why I have no white primer left um, so as you can see this is a couple of coats and uh, it's come out quite nicely. So we've had two coats of primer now and uh, we're almost ready for some spray paint. Now the next job is to use some fine sandpaper uh, 400 grit and we're just going to give a, a gentle sand over the surfaces um, to remove any imperfections before we spray paint. Uh, and the colour that I'm going for today is uh, Halford's Rover Damask Red. So while the paint is drying, um, what I'm going to do is look at the brickwork. So the first thing I need to do is paint the mortar. So I'm just going to use some Humbrol uh, Matte White 34. Uh, and once we've done that, we'll look at the brickwork. Uh, for the brickwork I use matte 82 and matte 100 and sometimes I add in some uh, 119. To do the roof um, I use matte 114, sorry 144. Oh and I also use matte 27 for the roof as well. making sure that I get in all of the gaps 
because it's actually in the gaps that we want the weight to be. You should also paint here as well. So now I've painted all of the brickwork white. Once this is dried, then we can start on the brick colour. Uh, until then, uh, I'm going to start painting the roof. So I'm going to paint the whole roof, the sides of the roof panels, and the capping tiles. And I'm going to use this matte 27. I've done one coat um, on the roof and the next coat we're going to do in grey and before the grey is dry we're going to run some blue through it like on the station building here so we're just going to brush on the grey Just give it a quick coat. So to do the blue, we're going to apply the blue before the grey has a chance to dry. I'm just going to go like this, just sort of randomly across the roof, some streaks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to brush each tile down like this. And if you think that you've put too much blue in, you can always add a bit of grey back in again. So we've given the uh, pieces a quick spray paint and these will be ready to fit after we do the brickwork. Um, I wouldn't say that my spray painting was particularly good on these, it's just very quickly. Um, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to weather all this afterwards. Just make it look a bit dirty, a bit more realistic. We're now going to look at doing the brickwork. So for this we're going to use a Humbrol Mat 82 and Humbrol Mat 100 for the brick colours. We're going to use a small piece of foam board and we're just going to use any old brush. Uh, and what we do is we brush from there onto the foam board and we carefully dab all over the surface. Um, if you wonder what kind of foam board I'm using here, uh, you can see you can put your fingernails into it. Uh, and this is poly foam. Uh, you can buy it in big sheets like this. 
and obviously you're not going to want to buy a big sheet for doing this but if you do happen to have some this is perfect and um, you can also use polystyrene uh, I find that the humble paints don't really attack the polystyrene in the time required to do this So we're going to take the polyfoam, we're going to dip our brush in there and just put a little amount on there. You don't want too much on here uh, because what will happen is it will run down into the mortar. So if you put too much on, you can always use a small piece of paper or something and you can dab some of it off. Um, you want just enough to coat the surface. And then all we do is we just gently rub it on and when we rub if you start moving your hand across before the foam hits the surface and gradually decrease the height a bit like an airplane coming into land uh, at the airport If you put slightly too much on, it can go into the mortar like what I've just done there. Um, but you can fix that. If you use a cloth, you can kind of wipe it off and do it again. Uh, because you're putting it on quite thinly uh, and the surface texture is a little bit rough, it dries quite quickly. So although this first coat looks quite light in colour, um, this won't be long before you can do another coat. And I can pretty much go over that straight away again and darken it for a bit with a bit more paint. Now if you want to start adding some other colours in there, uh, what I tend to do is just um, make like a palette on the paper and um, you can mix them up a bit. So I've now went round and done all of the brickwork in the one colour and uh, it's fairly random but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some of the individual bricks and I'm going to use the slightly darker colour which is the uh, Mat 100 to do this. Uh, I've done a couple there so I'm just going to go around and hand paint these. Um, I'll just use the, the, the small brush for doing this and I'll just use the paint neat from the uh, tin now because I've already painted the bricks it doesn't you don't have to be really accurate with it I mean you can just paint in the middle of the brick even like so because this color is quite similar to the one the main color which I used which was the matte 82 So now that I have painted some of the bricks in the Humble 100, I'm now going to paint the lintels. Now these are supposed to be wood, um, so I'm going to use a Humble Matte 160 
and I'm just going to paint these by hand. So the lintels could still do with another coat but I'm just going to speed this up a bit and uh, start gluing on the doors, the guttering um, and the fascia boards. So when you put the guttering on, uh, make sure it's in the middle and um, it needs to be pressed up against the roof panel. So just above the lintels there. And the drain pipe, it's entirely up to you where you want to put the drain pipe. But I'm going to put them at the side, and you could put it in the middle. Uh, but I'm thinking about putting another little sign on there, so I'm just going to put it to the side. So the, ne the last part of the uh, build um, is to paint the uh, ladies and gentlemen sign. So what I've done is I've just painted them in white, first of all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paint them black. So we're going to use that piece of foam board that I was using earlier. And we're just going to put some black onto it. But we've got to be really careful with these because um, they're so small and so you only need a tiniest bit of paint which I'm going to rub some of that off now and we're just going to dab it over the top And when you do this, it's always best to have less paint than you need, not more. Um, that way you won't ruin it, because you can always go back over it again. Uh, and once that's fully dry, what I'll do is I'll go and paint around the edges and then they'll be ready to stick on. So I've glued on the signs and the building is now complete. And I've also painted the doorknobs. Uh, unfortunately, in my haste to assemble this, the um, some super glue got stuck to uh, some of the paint here and pulled it off. So I'll need to touch that up. Uh, overall I'm quite happy with the build. Uh, considering this was made from reject parts which I had lying around, um, they went together okay. There was a bit of a dimple in the wall here, which actually, now that the brickwork's been painted, it's, it's barely noticeable. 
So I'm quite pleased about that. And uh, all of the corners have come out okay, uh, considering which I broke one of the pieces off. On the roof here, you can see that by mixing the matte and the uh, gloss, um, we've got quite a nice effect here. So that was a bit of an experiment and uh, I think that's come out okay. Um, that technique I've now used on my station building over here, which has uh, a slightly different style of roof tile. So the only thing really left to do is to weather the building. In its current state it looks a bit brand new which is fine if you want it to look brand new um, but I really do need to dirty it up and what we'll do to dirty it up is we'll use black and we'll thin it down with some thinners um, or we might even use some of this stuff this um, really cheap white spirit uh, what I find is if you use this really cheap white spirit it doesn't mix very well with the paint and it makes the paint go quite grainy but that can actually work quite well on the brickwork because it leaves lots of little tiny grains in amongst the uh, brickwork which looks like soot and it actually works quite well um, but if you want to do this to the building um, I would wait at least a week maybe even two weeks for the paint to fully dry humble paint does seem to take ages to dry especially in this cold weather that we're having at the moment uh, and then we'll thin it down in a couple of weeks and that's all for now. That's the end of part two.